he died from a, from an arrow in his in his back, I think. He had an arrow, arrowhead in his back. So maybe he was in some kind of uh, some kind of battle. He was chased away, and he perished in the Alps. Hello, uh, glad you could join me today. Uh, it's a, a gloomy day here. It's, uh, it's this time of year in November when it's almost not bright. Now it's uh, the, the brightest time of day, but still it's, it's like everything is gray, grayed out. It's a grayscale. <laughs> So I hope for some snow soon. Um, yes, I brought this. The the nice thing with with grey dark days is that you can light lanterns. One million years ago, someone came up with an with an unusually bright idea. Uh, and I'm talking about fire. Uh, the art of making fire uh, without using wildfires, because I guess that was people were doing uh, when we started to control fire, we used wildfires. The earliest known traces of fire it dates back to, it's hard to say, because the evidence is not very clear, but around one million years ago, and that is the Homo erectus period, the Homo erectus species, I think. Uh, maybe I'm wrong here, but uh, um, however, uh, and they used, they had no such um, tools. Uh, they didn't know what iron was, what steel was. Uh, they used flint. But uh, they, they made fire on an even more ancient way. So I have ordered a mineral, a mineral, a stone. Uh, so I'm wait waiting for that. I'm very excited to receive the iron pyrite. It's, uh, it's a stone, a mineral. And uh, it was used it was used to make fire. This is a relatively new invention. And uh, this was used until the match came. So this was used up into the, the end of the 19th century, I would say. It was quite common to use this. Uh, but before that, before that, how did people uh, make made fire? And uh, therefore, I have ordered uh, pyrite, pyrite, and it was used uh, probably around one million years ago to create sparks. And I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know if I can make fire with pyrite. Uh, but this is you use the iron pyrite, and then you use a piece of flint. You strike the flint against the iron pyrite, or the iron pyrite against um, uh, the flint and the principle is the same you shave off small fragments of uh, mineral or uh, well, um, steel in this case and you produce sparks and uh, so iron pyrite was used for that in the very early stages of uh, fire making as I said I haven't tried it but we'll try it. We'll try it on camera. So we hope we'll get a fire going by that. And maybe you know this Utsi um, uh, man that were, was found in the Alps. Uh, and he perished in the Alps. And he was covered with snow. And uh, the thaw, the, the ice melted. And some hikers found him. 
we found a foot <laughs> under a, a sheet of ice. And that was Ötzi. He had been laying there. He had been laying there for thousands of years. And that's very fascinating because he had iron pyrite with him uh, and flint. So that was his, ma his uh, way of making fire during that time. He also carried uh, some arrows and a knife of flint and some other, some other stuff. But uh, look that up, Ötzi, the Iceman, I think he's called. He, he died from, a, from an arrow in his, in his back, I think. He had an arrow, arrowhead in his back. So maybe he was in some kind of, um, some kind of battle. He was chased away and he perished in the Alps. So that will be interesting to see. Uh, I will not do it here because I had to wait for the, uh, the stone, the iron pride to, to be delivered to it. I wish you a good day, a good night, and the best, best times. Try to get out if you can in the woods. So, <laughs> okay, see you next time.